Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God. Welcome to the final segment and last final chapter of partnering God in business for the year 2020. And this is season five. And this will be segment chapter five and the last chapter 20. And before we get into the final segment for season five, let's just get a brief recap of what we covered in season five. In segment 17, in financial salvation, which was the subtitle, we talked about the spiritual liberty, profits, and the loss of material inheritance. Then we also talked about the greed and selfish ambitions, the business collapse, and the ultimate loss. And we went ahead and talked about the temporal material profits and the permanent spiritual goals, including the everlasting and eternal inheritance. And today, we want to conclude season five with information that is unique, that defines and explains financial salvation, which is the subtitle under Partnering God in Business, season five. And we are going to be talking about the unborn again business principles the unborn again business principles. So it's not just a human soul that is not born again, but the business principles, the activities of a business, the way a business is done. It is done not in the Jesus way, but it is done in the evil ways that reflect the presence of the devil himself. Meaning that it's not a business that is done to please God, but a business that is done again for the purposes of greed, manipulation, and sabotage. And once a business is done, in that manner of fashion, it is no longer a business that is also being done to support the community or a business that is being done for the benefit of the majority, but a business that is being done to only please a few while the, the masses remain oppressed. And I mean even a nation itself has its own bookkeeping strategics. It can reach that level whereby it can end up oppressing masses with its financial principles that are not born again. However, we are talking about individuals partnering God in business and what is desired of them to have a business that is rather born again than this type of business that we want to explain that is unborn again in its, princip in its principles and operations. And we said you're going to be talking also about the financial greed, manipulation and sabotage. And at the end, to conclude later on, we're going to be talking about the genuine, the, gen the genuine financial salvation, the real desired financial salvation according to the expectations of God. So for us to understand more on this last conclusion on season five, which is now segment 20, let's get into scriptures. In Luke chapter 19, verse one, and Jesus entered and passed through Jericho and behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans 
and he was rich. Having entered through Jericho, the scripture immediately informs and alerts us that there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was a chief among the publicans, and he was rich. The fact that the scripture immediately mentions about Zacchaeus in the midst of all the people that it left aside or left behind in Jericho shows that Zacchaeus was not just an ordinary man in Jericho because he was rich. The moment you become rich, as long as you are in this world, the moment you become rich, you become a notable figure. You don't become just ordinary, but you become extraordinary. You become easily notable. And we want to find out and realize what made Zacchaeus easily notable. And he sought to see Jesus who he was. The same that I said was easy, easily notable, or should I say was known and was famous, is the same that sought to see Jesus who he was. And the reason why he sought to see Jesus who he was, though he was rich, is because there was something that was supernatural about Jesus. He was not rich. Ezekias, Jesus did not come in the fame of being rich. He came in the fame of the glory of heaven. And the one that was rich had to find out and was keen and was interested and wanted to realize and find out who really this was that was also popular in his own fashion that had nothing to do with the riches of this earth. And this was what Zacchaeus wanted to know of all things, though he was also a notable, popular, famous, prominent figure in Jericho. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the for the press because he was likely of stature. And the scripture defines that Zacchaeus was likely of stature, but still in Jericho, he was the prominent, he was the popular, he was the famous because he was rich. So it doesn't matter what kind of a family that you come from. It doesn't matter how you look like physically in terms of appearance, your stature, but as long as you are financially well up, you become a figure that is known. But there is he that then came into Jericho that did not have the same fame in the fashion of riches, but he had the fame in the fashion of glory, wisdom from heaven, presence of God, the Son of God, and it was Jesus. And this took over Jericho in a glimpse of a moment, such that even he that was the owner of Jericho who wanted to see who really Jesus was, he had to climb up into a sycamore tree to see him for he was to pass that way. And this is exactly what Zacchaeus did. With all the money that he had as a tax collector, he went and climbed up to, into a sycamore tree just to see who Jesus was. For he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, 
make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. There is a reason here why Jesus wants to go and abide and visit Zacchaeus at his house. This is a prophetic reason. Jesus has just entered into Jericho and he is just passing by. And he has got issues that he needs to address to Zacchaeus that pertain individuals that are in Jericho. Zacchaeus is not just an individual. Zacchaeus represents a business that is corrupt. Zacchaeus represents a business that is operating without the principles of God. Zacchaeus represents a business that is manipulating the majority. Zacchaeus represents a business that does not fear God. Zacchaeus represents a business that has become an oppressive system. And Jesus knows that if Zacchaeus is delivered, the whole of Jericho also will be delivered. Meaning that there is a business that can operate without the presence of God. And there is no significance of financial salvation inside that business, number one in terms of the salvation that is desired for the owner of that business because he is not partnered with God. Number two, there is no salvation of finances in that business. Every profit that is made in that business is not for the benefit sake of even the community itself. It does not support the needy. It does not support the poor. That business is an empire of the devil himself, its profits, its margin of growth and expansion is not for the sake of the kingdom of God. It is for the sake of the kingdom of the devil. It does not save the principles of God. And such were the operations of Zacchaeus is not just only a tax collector, but a businessman that had not received Jesus Christ in his life. And this displeased many people in Jericho. And when many people had seen Jesus coming into Jericho, they thought that they were coming to be delivered as individuals. But Jesus had come to deliver a business system, a taxation system that was manipulative, that did not represent salvation in terms of finances, but it represented oppression that oppressed money that belonged to different individuals, meaning that many people in Jericho started to struggle financially, not because they were not working, but because their finances were oppressed and they needed that financial salvation from Jesus. And when Jesus comes, they don't expect to see Jesus telling Zacchaeus to make haste and come down for he must visit him at his house. This confused a lot of people in Jericho. And as soon as Zacchaeus made haste and came down and received received him joyfully, all the people that were in Jericho, they saw this and they all murmured saying, that he he was going to be guest with a man that is a sinner. The reason why Zacchaeus has been described and defined as a sinner by the majority of the people that are in Jericho is not because of his own personal life activities, but because of his business principles. The principles of Zacchaeus in business had gone to the level of suppressing people financially, stealing from people. The unborn again business principles, the business that is done in crooked ways of making profits, and it excels according to its crookedness. A business that is done according to theft and fraud 
and it robs the weak it robs the elderly people daylight robberies of finances that are done and a business grows not according to the principles of righteousness of honesty and the transparency those are the unborn again principles all being emphasized by the financial greed that Ezekiel said he manipulated this the majority and he sabotaged them but Jesus has come to influence the genuine financial salvation in the city of Jericho and put an end to the unborn again business principles that inspired the taxation of many that was unfair. And Zacchaeus dined with Jesus at his house. And while least Jesus was dining with Zacchaeus at the house, I suppose all the residents, all the people in the community, in the city of Jericho, they all stood outside complaining why Jesus had gone inside to dine with a man that was a sinner, but they did not know that Jesus had come to negotiate for the release of their money. Jesus had come to negotiate for the freedom and spiritual liberty of their financial salvation. They did not know that Jesus had come to address their finances, something that many people don't understand and something that people, they don't still know that Jesus can address financial related issues beyond the spiritual, but using the spirituality. And Zacchaeus, in the middle of being lectured by Jesus, in the middle of dining, he received a word that touched his heart, a word that he had never received ever since he started texting people, a word that he had never received since he started doing business, meaning that he was doing business all along without God, which is another broken principle. He was doing business without honesty and transparency, which is another principle that is broken. He was just doing business in the carnality of selfishness, greed, manipulation, and he stood up in the middle of a conversation with Jesus while they were dining after being lectured with the wisdom that is profound from heaven. And he said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give to the poor. He was not forced. He said this willingly from his own heart after being given the word. I give half of my goods to the poor. And if ever I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, which is another broken principle, of theft and fraud, bribery, bribing, corrup corruption, theft, fraud, and business. These are the aspects that are making the business people of the devil to excel. And Zechariah says, I restore everyone and I restore each and, e each and every individual and each and every business that I've robbed fourfold and jesus upon hearing these words he says words that were very prophetic that confirm and conclude season five he says this day is salvation come to this house for as much as he is also a son of abraham for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost what if the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost what was lost is not only Zacchaeus' soul but what was also lost was the finances that has been stolen the finances of the people that had been diverted by Zacchaeus 
So people of God, I want you to understand that as much as you have received the salvation of the soul, you also need salvation in finances. And when we are talking about financial salvation, we are talking about the salvation of not being captivated by the money that you have gathered. Ezekiel was now captivated by what he had stolen from the people. But we are talking about the financial salvation that gives you the genuine salvation of finances while you're in the presence of God. Until next time, have a blessed, great day.